Those but, are invasive cyborgs. They have yeah, yeah. no natural predators yeah. here. Right. Ro robot right. dinosaurs are an essential part of the ecosystem, okay? <laughs> yes, of <Yeah>. course. <laughs> <laughs>
really. <laughs> like, cool. I know I played it. I remember a bow and arrow, and I remember yep. it being too hard for me at the time. It was very challenging. That's, yeah, yeah. What about uh, you, I played it at a buddy of mine's place, N64 as well. Again, way too hard for Baby Pete. <laughs> But I played the kind of shitty reboot that came out on, like, the Xbox or something at some uh, point. The 2008 version. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. that one I did play through with uh, with my buddy Kyle. Uh, and we beat it. It was a blockbuster rental. We needed something to do before yeah. we could drink or smoke weed. So yeah. we had to beat Turok 2008. And it, it's not the worst thing on the planet, but it certainly yeah. isn't good. It, it it's be- just, like, a bunch of bro dudes. like, And then you go down, like, basically, like, a... Uh, a glorified hallway and shoot either dinosaurs or humans depending on what that room is and then yeah. when you get to the end of that hallway there's a boss character then you start on a new hallway which is the next level oh, nice. yeah That's, it's yeah they take out the time travel for some reason and it's it's like a research planet where they're cloning dinosaurs to use as weapons yeah. or something which is is really stupid and we have an episode <laughs> really about Jurassic stupid. Park <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, we ha- we have an episode about Jurassic Park. The plot of Jurassic World is also that is they were trying to raise dinosaurs awesome. to be soldiers, and I'm just like, they don't speak English. Yeah, like, the, you can, like you know, literally any person can do a better job. It's like it's like I, you know what you know what we're making we're making killing machines. Why not use real machines if you're yeah, gonna make are, killing machines? Are, <laughs> like you know what's better than a fucking velociraptor? Actual children. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, I'm pulling up like the names of the characters from that 2008 2008 version, and they're all dudes. They're all like poking fun at each other. One's named like Slade, Reese, okay, yeah. John Grimes. It's all like uh, Mar- Marcus Phoenix, Coltrane. The, the, yeah, you play as Joe Turok. <laughs> Joe Turok. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph, but no, it's no. Joe Turok. Yeah. Open up. Oh it's God. Joe. Joe who? Joe Turok. Mama. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, Joe, about to rock yo, mama. Yeah, there we go. We got oh there. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. Anyways, the 2008 version, not not the best. I played no. um the first on N64. I owned it, so uh, it was really hard for me, but I managed to push like a little bit into the game since I just had it all the time with me. Yeah. Um, it should come as no but- surprise to listeners that rock one was too hard for all of us because as as you know those who can video game do those who can't host a podcast about video games <laughs> so. yes <laughs> yeah. also uh shooters are pretty young around then and uh, adapting um what now mouse and keyboard can do so so well or two uh analog sticks can do really well um the old n64 controller wasn't the best at, at being a first no. person shooter uh controller i only uh, found out there was a second old turok 20 minutes ago when we checked the price of it on GOG. I had oh, no yeah. idea there was a sequel. <laughs> I, may oh, have, I may have played the second one, honestly. I don't, I don't know. I remember a bow and dinosaurs and it just being too hard for me. Could be either. Yeah. Uh, the second one's very good. It's still, even today, if you look at like top 10 lists of guns in games, uh, just how good the guns were in that such an old shooter that it still comes up on lists. Like, yeah, I even know about it. it's uh, the one that like it shoots a drill into a guy's head and then blows it up. Is yeah. like everybody <laughs> loves that shit. <laughs> yeah, you have like a missile launcher that shoots like three seeking missiles. You have like a kind of like a glaive that you throw like a boomerang and it comes back to you. Uh, oh, you, cool, your bow hard. for the sneakiness, knife kills. Uh, it had a lot for an N sixty four version of a any shooter um but what happens in it jamie yeah so so let's get into it so if you haven't played it uh it is an n64 first person shooter plays a lot like doom but it also has elements of something like tome raider with uh, puzzle platforming type stuff Tome. uh yeah t- t- uh t- sorry tom b raider tom oh, tom b raider. right <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> mr raider mr tom b raider you've left your bags at check-in <laughs> oh i'm sorry it's like a dinosaur <laughs> <laughs> dinosaur in an ancient clay tablet <laughs> uh, so you play as a native american man uh who needs to hunt either dinosaurs aliens and why uh he's put in that position we'll get into uh <laughs> yeah. no, you're saying it's not just doing it for fun this isn't trophy hunting well, it's it's like how do you get a dinosaur to Native American man in the same room without making some type of walk in the, into a bar joke? Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so 
Turok is actually not the hero's name in uh, the two games that we'll be talking about. Uh, the first Turok and the second Turok. Are you telling me they cha- they they in the reboot they changed him to John Turok and that they thought that was a better fucking idea yeah, than right. what yeah. they had? <laughs> yeah, it's it's actually a title. Like Turok would be like champion or something like that. Oh, okay. oh yeah. Okay. So so I'm gonna guess Joe Turok is the is a descendant of somebody who had this title at some point and it became a last name. That's through, what they say. Through a modern lens. That's well, what like I would Miller. say too. Yeah, uh, yeah, like your your ancestors used to be people who milled shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. My uh, oh. my <laughs> Pete's ancestors of the Donug. Uh, yeah. Is pe- <laughs> people who were of the Donug. You know, at first they didn't have last names, and it became that. My last name, obviously, people uh, who palmed things. Would, uh, yeah. you know. I'm glad we're we're really looking into the etymology of names because there's gonna be a name that comes up a little later that <laughs> is fucking fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it's not the hero's name, but it's like it's the eldest born of each generation takes us on, and it's like a lineage of really strong people that have a lot of influence um, that we'll get into. Uh, this is stated on the box description of. Uh, of the first game says the mantle has been passed you've become protector of the earth you are now turok dinosaur hunter make dinosaurs extinct again (laughs) it doesn't say that it It, says exactly that it says that wow it was it it was donald trump it's all good (laughs) yeah he just like he pops on his red cap with the feathers in it he's just like time to take these dinos out (laughs) dude it might have even been before golden eye like when did golden eye come out golden eye in like 97 or 98 1997 so it would have been like uh, in the same breath okay yeah Yeah. so turok's content actually takes place in the lost land uh in both the video games so this is described as an interdimensional sewer of the multiverse hell yeah yeah two different responses to that (laughs) pete saying (laughs) uh all manner of life from every time corner of time and space can be transported there thanks to randomly appearing portals or tears in reality um it's an important place um and it's connected to everywhere so uh, to keep the lost land uh, in good health is is really important for the whole universe okay i mean it's it that's such a good uh setup for just a, a silly sci-fi shooter as well it's just like oh yeah well that's why all that shit's here is uh, the universe yeah. is just colliding that's yeah. conjunction of the spheres. That's why we have mole men and dinosaurs is because, yeah. you know, yep. it's overlap. I want to say, that it was it Jules Verne who wrote The Lost World where, like, there's dinosaurs and also weird, like, goblin men at the center of the planet? I believe so. Yeah. Uh, it's a very good Minnie? It's a very good sci-fi setup. No, uh, it's Jules Verne Troyer is Minnie Me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so I did, yeah, go- I did Google the Lost Word World trying to pull this up, and uh, it came up with Jurassic Park: The Lost World, of course. Uh, but it was uh, Arthur Conan Doyle, author oh, of, okay. author of Sherlock Holmes, author and creator yes. of Sherlock Holmes. So yeah, that this is the being like the sewer of the multiverse. This is why you can have a Native American hero fighting cyborg dinosaurs, all in the same setting, along with aliens and all the rest of it. Yeah, someone flushed a dinosaur down the toilet. Someone got a baby yeah. dinosaur, didn't realize how big it was going to get, a third of a football field, <laughs> and decided to flush <laughs> it down a toilet. <laughs> oh my god. Interdimensional toilet. No. <laughs> uh, so I had heard of the Tur- Turok games, but not of where Turok actually started. I thought Turok the game was where everything started. Do you guys know where Turok comes from? Uh, n- No. Uh, uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle wrote the first Turok novel in when was he born? Sixty-seven. I have no idea. I just closed, okay. I closed the Arthur Conan Doyle wiki just a second ago. So now, uh, can I take a wild guess? Because there's an old movie that was in my head that I had to just pull up there, like while we were while we were like talking. You can take a wild guess, but I just saw you Google, so you're not getting any extra points. Right? It's because I couldn't remember. I yeah. couldn't remember what it was actually called. Is it like a loose adaptation of the Valley of Guanji? Uh, that I don't know. Okay. Maybe, so, maybe no. it's inspired by it. But <laughs> there's Turok comment, comics, which date back to the mid-50s. Oh, yeah. What? Sir yeah. Arthur Conan Doyle died in 1930. So so he couldn't have done it. it unless he, uh, he he put unless, it in a safe. and then Unless he yeah. literally ghost wrote it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> also, Peter, I think the Jules Verne uh, novel you're thinking of is Journey to the Center of the Earth. Okay, yeah, that is it. Yeah. yeah. The, the Turok title and Lost Lands part of this stuff, like uh, Turok being uh, like the title of a champion, this is canonized in the video games. Turok was the name of the dude in the comic. Uh, the Lost Land didn't exist, like this interdimensional sewer place in the comics. Um, we can start with the comics and see where the base came from and then kind of build the video game canon on top of that. But Jamie, up until now, but I've Jamie, said video you game hate stuff. comic books. You always complain <laughs> when I talk about Thanos and Ant-Man. <laughs> I don't I don't hate comic books. I hate the industry of spewing out a movie every 6 that's, months that they, oh, okay, yeah, that they just fair. cash in on the masses. Totally that's fair. I, totally fair. Yeah. They they charge you a subscription fee and then $30 on top of that to watch it yourself and wonder why people pirate it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh the comics uh Turok first appeared in um a comic called Four Color Comics. Uh, like okay, is that is that one two three four colors or yeah. is that f like it, for the sake of color? <laughs> yes, the four as in uh, the, number the number four. four. Okay, <laughs> four, four color comics. Uh, probably because they had four colors back in the 1950s. Like it'd be like, we have red, blue, green, and yellow. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah, magenta, cyan, uh, black, <laughs> black, and yellow, yellow. Yeah. The yeah. oppressed gamers back in the 50s had to get their RGB comic books. Yeah. <laughs> it was RGB plus one. Yeah. 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 Um, so in Four Color Comics, it, it appears to be like a comic book that wouldn't, like, it wasn't just X-Men or just Superman, but there would be different tales from, like, different places. Yeah, Astonishing Tales kind of thing. Yeah. A lot of comics were like compilation books back in back in yeah, the day. Yeah, a lot, a lot of a lot of sci-fi like Heinlein and Asimov and all these writers of like the the people who pioneered modern sci-fi. It was all like pulp. They would submit to a monthly magazine. It was like short stories. So I have the Foundation trilogy in like a single book, but it's ba every chapter is basically a short story that he wrote in like the same tale kind of thing. Um, okay. So as you're reading the 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 novelization of it in in one book it's so, like you get all these like random recaps where like two characters will have a dialogue like oh you remember like when this happened and it's because when he was actually printing them that came out like six months yeah. ago not in the same book right so it's just super hard to remember yeah when i was looking through the turok things like they he does get his own comic but there's like offshoots of it of like young turok that were showing up just like a sunday weekly digest type thing where you okay. just get a few panels yeah, and yeah things like that but so four color comics issue 596 turok son of stone uh, was the first time it, it appeared and it had its a whole issue just to itself and then again in six in the same comic four color comics in issue 656 so in when they first put it out the first one it got a little bit of traction then they put it out a second time to see if it would catch on and it caught on a lot um and this uh, led to Western Publishing picking up Turok Son of Stone as a standalone comic series in May 1956. That is it might a... be the oldest thing I've talked about on the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, Son of Stone is just a great epitaph. That is like a, a, yeah. a wicked nickname <laughs> or title. So Tur Turok means Son of Stone in uh, in one of the languages that we're we're going to touch on. Okay, Inter interdimensional yeah. interdimensional sewer sewer speak. Yeah. I don't think it's a real language, so who cares? But yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. I would I would feel bad if you told me like no, it's it's Mandarin Chinese. I'd be like, oh, it's French. <laughs> <laughs> it's French. <laughs> it's Apache. Uh, yeah. Uh, but Turok and his brother Ondar were um, pre-Columbian era Native Americans. Okay. Okay. Uh, so they're identified as Mandan or Mandan, M-A-N-D-A-N, which is a Native American of the Great Plains who have lived. Uh, for centuries, primarily in now what is North Dakota. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. North Jesterful. And <laughs> outside of Turok, Man of Stone, there's also a spinoff called uh, Young Hawk. And uh, if you guys could break down this name for me, it's written by Gaylord Dubois. <laughs> <laughs> Gaylord was actually like a very common 
older yeah. name. That's like um in what what was it that, that Ben Stiller movie Meet the Parents? I think the first one. Yeah, uh, yeah. His name was Gaylord. They all called him Greg. But like yeah. one of those one of those names that really like snuck through history and uh, kind of got twisted there, huh? Yeah. Of the wood, of, of the, the wood, du bois. Of the wood. Yeah. I I just, I just love that. It, I mean, it does sound like an expensive suit or like a fancy car. <laughs> when it, it's just like, oh no no no, please. <laughs> I don't drive a Mercedes. This is a Gaylord Dubois. I, I drive a Gaylord oh, very Dubois. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> As he, he, he says it in uh, interdimensional sewer speak. Uh, yes. Je vole le uh, Gaylord gay, gay Dubois. <laughs> gay boy. <laughs> a gay boy. Gay yeah. boy. <laughs> gay boy. Gay Lord, yeah. <laughs> um, so these early versions of the story, as I kind of touched on before, they don't mention um, the location, <clears throat> sorry, as being the lost land but instead they say they're trapped in a deep canyon in the carlsbad area of new mexico okay, so, okay. the uh, home it, of the bottomless pit carlsbad springs yep. or carlsbad caverns. The state. i didn't know about those are those real yeah it's a real bottomless those pit real, in, yeah. In, yeah. in nevada or new mexico nevada oh. <laughs> Damn. Damn. That's pretty crazy they haven't found a bottom yet. <laughs> yeah, just <keep> going. <laughs> they got that they need the Russians and their very long drill to see if they can find the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> every Rus- every Russian that, that sees it, or even a lot of them who just hear you speak of it, get so uh unaccountably erect that all the blood leaves their brain and they pass out. So, oh, okay. <laughs> they just deep deep holes. Russians are about it. <laughs> yep. And apparently so are Turok and Ondar, the two Indian youths that lived there. Um, and they meet ancient forms of life which have disappeared from all other parts of the world. So they're basically saying the dinosaurs that would have died to the volcano or the meteor or whatever happened, uh, they were safe in this deep old Russian hole. <laughs> <laughs> Soviets trying to dig up dinosaurs during the Cold War just so they could use them as soldiers against the Americans. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and they couldn't figure out why their pens wouldn't work at the pressure uh, at the bottom of the hole, but then they just used a pencil instead. I guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I love that this is like, because that is a classic trope. It's kind of like a Loch Ness monster sort of thing as well, where it's just like, well, no, it's it's just the prehistoric life that avoided extinction and has some, somehow just existed on the fringes of the known world for a little while. Like, I guess this is like Carlsbad or Scotland. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's exactly. before the... Yeah. <laughs> It at least existed in the states before the white people came and coughed on the Native Americans. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, because in this instance here, if it's pre-Columbian, it's set in like the somewhere between twenty thousand years ago and like the thirteen hundreds, right? Yeah, it's a it's a big old window we got there for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this part kind of reminded me of Horizon, uh, since we're we're talking about it. it's like a tribe interacting with dinosaurs, and uh, Turok refers to many of the prehistoric animals as honkers. The, or, uh... <laughs> look at all look at them honkers <laughs> look, at yeah. all them honk- look at her with the two honkers behind her huh <laughs> holy moses <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, andar has since not laughed at this joke for 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 decades at this point he yeah. just like stares at him he's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, so they have like more uh they go more specific i guess so for a t-rex they're sometimes called runners um, P T E R O S A R S T E R O S A R S T E R O S A R S T E R O S A R S Yeah, like it's like a pterodactyl. What would you call them? Uh, Gliders. Sure. No. Flyers. <laughs> flyers is right. Hey. Okay, you got flyers. Yeah, yeah, time. You, you hand. They, they get handed out at the grocery store sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just a just a pterosaur, just like pinned or like stapled to a telephone pole <laughs> with like a little yeah. message on his belly, like. <laughs> Pluck little phone numbers off <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> from his toes. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, velociraptors are. You guys want to guess? Shriekers. I don't know. That's very close. Uh, oh, screamers. Screamers. Yeah, you got hey, it. Hey, it's your I cat, Pete. It. Yeah. yeah. R.I.P. <laughs> R.I.P. Uh, gone the way of the gone the way of the dinosaurs. Gone the way of the the velociraptor. Yeah. Yeah. Plesiosaurs are uh, sea swimmers? demons. Yeah, I would have guessed swimmers, oh, okay. but this one they went for sea demons. Yeah, I guess flyer, 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 shrieker, sea demon. Like, really, what the fuck, really dude? mixing <laughs> up the formula on us here. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And triceratops are horn demon, horn pokers. <laughs> it goes back to the original format. It's skewers. Uh, not just, bad. Not just bad. kebabers. 
Uh, I think Dodge. Rammers. Ram. Rammers, you got it. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I don't know who's keeping score. I assume Bison, but I do think I came ah! out on top in that one. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> so the original series of comics, there's about 200 issues of Turok, and they're released between 1956 and 1982. Okay. So it was a, a long, it was a long, a long time running. A long stretch for that many issues, too. Yeah. Um, most of the time, if you're wondering about the plot, if there's like an overarching one, there's not really. It's usually, well, Andor and Turok, there's a giant monkey who's stealing the women from the tribe. We better giant go. monkey stole all our bananas. Yeah. yeah. But to, but to be fair, go. a giant crocodile it, with a crown stole his bananas. It's a real uh, <laughs> honker of the week series, basically. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, 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 the mix, too, of just like, yes, okay, so we've got the classic prehistoric setup. The valley somewhere in the U.S. that somehow no one ever found, full of dinosaurs. Also, monkey men. Hell yeah. Literally yeah. everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was looking up, like, some of the names of it, and it's always like, a Turok and Anders run into uh, this thing. And so, yeah, that's yeah. pretty much all of it. Um, in 1992, Valiant Comics uh, revamped Turok. They picked up the rights. And they debuted him in a comic called Magnus Robot Fighter number 12. Hell yeah, I would buy that comic. Yep. You got it. You see that? You got it. Monkey Brain says bye. Monkey Brain sees <laughs> shiny, says yes, please. <laughs> Monkey Man say kidnap women from village. <laughs> <laughs> Take banana if you see it. Yeah. So they, they changed the concept and the setting um, with this new introduction. Uh, Turok and Ondar are no longer uh, pre-Columbian, but they're 18th century Native Americans. Okay. Okay, so post-Columbian, some would say. Yeah. The calendar, for one, would say that. I like I like the idea of keeping the canon continuous, and just like they popped into the sewer dimension, finally escaped after years, but like hundreds of years later in our time. Experienced, experienced post-Columbian Native American life for just long enough to become jaded, and then accidentally slipped into another Carl's Bad Caverns bottomless pit, and ended up <laughs> back in the sewer dimension. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah. They were in like the the bottomless pit up until now, and now they are in the Lost Lands, where it is the like you said, the the sewer of the multiverse. Okay, so uh, the sci-fi setting is part of the is part of the re reboot in the 90s where they were just like, uh, well, I guess it's cuz the trope of of just the undiscovered canyon full of dinosaurs, no one would understand that anymore. Yeah, but, they probably also want Turok to be able to like shoot a man with his bow and be kind of justified like I think after you go through um, oh, yeah. the Colombian folks showing up. I just yeah. want Turok to shoot a man, damn it. I'm going to write the writers. <laughs> It's like ang angry letters flooding into the studio. The series is great, but why doesn't he kill any men? God damn it! <laughs> like I said, in the 1700s, you could kill a cowboy if you want. Like, yes, thank you. Yes, please. <laughs> so, a cosmic anomaly causes uh, time in the Lost Lands to move in a self-contained loop, uh, which means that while millions of millions of years pass outside of it, time barely moves at all. Uh, we'll talk about the anomaly. Um, Near the end, or uh, in the middle of Turok 2, of what actually caused that, but you just know that something happened around the Big Bang, actually, that caused this little bubble. Okay, okay. so when you say time doesn't move very much, does that mean, like, any point in time can interact with kind of any... Like, any point in our timeline, let's say, can interact with this pocket dimension? So, like, if you're in the Turok dimension, and I'm not saying this happens in the game, could, like, you come from pre-Columbian, or let's say post-Columbian... Uh, or post Columbus, um, can you move forwards and backwards in time in interacting with the time with this area? Right, like yeah, can, like, can, can a guy from the '80s go in and then a guy from the '70s comes in after after him? him right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking a dinosaur pops yeah. out of nowhere in front of you, and you're yeah. like, "What the fuck is oh, that?" Okay. Um, uh, Lord Boy's Canon. Let's say yes. Cool. We the story yeah. never has to interact with anything like that, so we don't have to test yes or no yeah. on that. There's no oh. bell bottom pants, so a guy from yeah. the '70s is not the next. Is there's there's no like. Johnny Turok from 1977 who gets from his disco dimension into the <laughs> yeah. lost lands. Moon, moon walked into a black hole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So from um, Magnus Robot Fighter, uh, the crossover's main villain is a psychotic superpowered being known as Mother God. Okay. Um, sure. And she cool. she uses the lost lands as her base of operations. 
Um, so okay. she outfits dinosaurs with intelligence boosting implants, turning them into bionosaurs. So you get these cool. <laughs> Hell yeah. I mean, that's Horizon Zero Dawn right there, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That, but I bought Horizon Zero Dawn and 100 percent it in less than a week the last time, and I might just have to buy Turok after this. <laughs> <laughs> I love the uh, the term Bionosaurs is the most 90s thing that we've talked about. Yeah, quite, ab- quite absolutely. Time. That that Great. could have been a show for sure with yeah. like the shitty 3D uh, animation of the 90s. Like that easily could have been a show. Oh, I would have loved it. So yeah. if you're into it, you can definitely go check out those comics. Uh, but in the aftermath of the final battle between Mother God and the Valiant Universe heroes from this robot comic, I didn't look into it at all. Um, the Lost Lands begin to disappear. Um, for some reason, I guess once you get rid of Mother God or you, you, you had a big fight like this, it just started to go away. Just all those Bionosaurs Tur- pumping too much CO2 into the atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking it was just like Turok playing Johnny B. Good on a guitar, looking at a Polaroid photo, and all the dinosaurs were fading away. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Shirt- he's like shirtless in a native headdress, playing on an electric flying. Yeah, 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 that's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just mo- Mother God, whatever this cartoon supervillain looks like, like holding up a phone to Turok doing this. Like, yeah. <laughs> That is for that's a joke for everybody who's seen Back to the Future. If you haven't seen Back to the Future, enjoy it. Go Back to the Future and watch it. Yeah. Um, so Turok and Andar, uh, as the Lost Lands are beginning to disappear, are tossed into a post-apocalyptic future Earth, and a group of Bionosaurs uh, make it to Earth along with them. Uh, they become ruthless hunters trying to contend with the demons and aliens that exist in the future world. As long as as there's also Lovecraftian abominations high-tech future warriors so they're just back on earth um in some type of crazy <laughs> fucking situation like, this is one of those things where it's just like yeah we bought the rights from a com a pulp comic from the 50s um and didn't keep any of it yeah it's yeah. just like it's just the main character <laughs> the main character's name and i guess his backstory they just kind of modernizes him a bit and then yeah. was just like yeah well actually it's it's just a regular comic at this point. <laughs> yeah. If you're interested in those, you can check out Valiant uh, Turok Dinosaur Hunter. And that was launched in 1993. And I think there's 53 in- issues. Um, so mo- in the end, Mother God seizes the power. And with the help of the campaigner, who's going to come back in the game later, the Long Hunter, Thunder, uh, which is a biomechanical T Rex, oh, yeah. uh, Mantid, a 30 foot robot praying mantis. And she. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I injected so much robotics into a normal praying mantis that it is now 30 feet tall. <laughs> just a tiny, be- I, I'm just picturing like like a Pacific Rim-esque kaiju where it's just a tiny little praying mantis just steering this thing from the inside. <laughs> like an actual full-size praying yeah. mantis. Or two tiny praying mantises, I guess, if we're going to compare it to oh, the yeah. <laughs> Right. Well, yeah, because controlling the mech suit is it would overload the brain of your average praying mantis. So you need, <laughs> exactly. to, you need to drift two of them. Across yeah, yeah. So you got to make sure that it's not like male female because otherwise they'll try and mate and the female oh, yeah. will decapitate the male. That off one. Yeah. Although that might be more convenient for hooking up the brain to to get that processing right. power, right? Just right. Yes. Pop the head off. Yeah. <laughs> the male body's still drifting even though it's being devoured. You know, it's is <laughs> yep. your animal fact for the day. Uh. So 1997, um, the creator of the game uh, and the I think the now owner of Turok uh, picked up Turok, and it's uh, Acclaim Entertainment. It, okay, yeah, I've heard of them. They're within. Uh, they did a bunch of stuff. They did like Tiger Heli, like that cool uh, NES, like over the top helicopter shooting game. They did uh, some like Ren and Stimpy games. I. I, I like early '90s, if you were going to Blockbuster or like late '90s, I mean, um, you were picking up a lot of their games. Even I mean, early I, I will say I googled them quickly. I got to the Wikipedia page, and they have a link to uh, games published. Obviously, it's like yeah. the fifth subchapter, and then it takes you to another Wikipedia page just list of claim entertainment games. Like I'd had the same journey today, and <laughs> okay. I, I found a lot of them that There's that a I recognize. Ton of games here, yeah. They were huge back then, and they, they would take like things like from TV shows and adapt them, also just take on like fresh games or even buy up old comic stuff, too, because Acclaim Comics, uh, they, they had their own uh, section of the company for comics. Cool. Um, okay. So 1997, 
98. Um, they revamped the, the universe, and Turok is now not the character's name, but is the title, meaning Son of Stone. So we finally okay. got got to when they they revamped that. When, when two rocks had a baby, they made a turtle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's two rock. It's like O'Donoghue, but to rock. Yes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Who would win, the rock or two rock? Two rock, because he's a got rock. The rock is one rock. Two rock is two rocks. Yeah. yeah. Easy win. He's also got all those guns. <laughs> oh, uh, the Rock has two pretty big guns. Okay, he's got two guns. Oh, yeah. yeah, a little. Sh- I don't know what his reach is. They're a bit shorter range than a bow and arrow. <laughs> <laughs> so the the story for this one is Turok must protect the barriers between this dimension and the others. Uh, he's back in the. I'm forgetting it again. Lost, the lost lands. Lost land. Exactly. Okay. Lost land. He's back. Yeah, so he he lives there, and things will come and go from the world, but he's all about preserving the Lost Land. Um, It's a place where creatures from across time and space have been dragged to, and where time has no meaning. What are Uh, clocks? So is he trying to preserve the balance of the amount of dinosaurs versus the amount of cyborg dinosaurs that are in nature to preserve the ecosystem or something? Right, yeah. I, I think as long as they stick to their little corner of the Lost Lands and they, they're not trying to hurt others, they're they're cool. Those right. are invasive cyborgs. They have yeah, yeah. no natural predators yeah. here. Right. Ro- robot right. dinosaurs are an essential part of the ecosystem, okay? Yes, of yeah. course. <laughs> uh, in this version of the Turok comic, the main character is Joshua Fireseed. Okay, is... that's a way better name than Co- cousin, Joe Turok. Co- cousin to Johnny Appleseed. Yeah, he, he walked around the United States just planting fires, planting hot, <laughs> hot peppers. <laughs> yeah, instead of sowing his seed everywhere, he gave everyone an STD. Yeah, so oh, okay. I see. yeah, he was a killer for a long time. <laughs> yeah, uh, so he's also the main character of the second Turok game. Oh, okay. but, Josh is. Yeah, Joshua Fireseed. Joshua Fireseed. Okay, he's Joshua the latest Fireseed. Turok. Uh, so he he's protecting the Lost Lands, that's his whole thing. Um, and this leads us up to Acclaim Entertainment's and Iguana Entertainment's 1997 video game release, Turok Dinosaur Hunter. Okay. Uh, also known in Japan as Space Time Warrior Turok. Well, that doesn't make sense at all. Well, <laughs> no, I mean, it does. It actually it makes a hell of a lot more <laughs> sense, actually. I, I would, Peter, I don't mean to keep nagging you here, but I'd say it makes exactly about the same amount of sense because he he <laughs> does he d- is a warrior in space time and he also is a dinosaur hunter. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, he's, he's, well, he's just trying to balance out nature more than anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the story revolves around a Tal Set, T A L apostrophe S E T, who is the current Turok uh, during this time. That's how you know it's a good oh, fantasy okay. name because it has an apostrophe in it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's a warrior of Saquin descent or Sake, S A Q U I N. Um, I looked it up and I don't think it's a real branch of what Native Americans were, but it was just a branch they made up for this game in the 90s. Okay. Uh, that was a Native American tribe who were yeah. in the deserts of New Mexico into central Oklahoma. Uh, yeah. Their culture is linked with the Abascan people of Alaska, which I'm not sure if it's made up. And in the second tongue, Turok means son of stone, but okay, yeah, yeah. But so it's just made up language. Yeah, in uh, yeah. the Saquin, I didn't, I didn't look up the uh, the other one you mentioned, but Saquin is definitely fictional per the yeah. Valiant Comics fandom dot com wiki. I did the same would, Google earlier, <laughs> and then you would go down. To. Yeah, you go down, and it's like WebMD. Should you take Saquin? Is it right for you? Because apparently, it's a medication <laughs> as well. Oh. Uh, my guess as to why they made up a tribe is because you would probably have to check with one of the like existing nations to be like, yo, can we use your guy's name in right. our video game where you hunt dinosaurs? And they either didn't bother or they said no. I think it was a real tribe, uh, the one they used in the 50s, but they probably could just get away with more in the 50s. Well, yeah, I just think so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. So, they, yeah, they probably just didn't want to... They wanted to make their own mythology for the tribe and yeah. everything, right? So. Yeah. So uh, Turok means son of stone, and it re- represents an ancient mantle handed down to each member of the Fireseed lineage. Uh, this also comes with uh, basically a bag of holding. It's like a leather sack that they keep on their... It looks like a gun holster kind of thing, Hell and yeah. it can hold as infinite guns as long as you're the Turok. Infinite Hell guns, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not the Turok and you put your hand in there, you won't find nothing. 
two weapon limit for all those other losers, but for Turok, you get the weapon wheel, and it's yeah, in yeah. a bag. <laughs> yep. Nice. When I watched a, a criticism of the 2008 version, they were saying that you couldn't have all your guns equipped at once. You had to just equip certain ones if you wanted to use them on the fly, which I thought went against the lore, but thanks, 2000. <laughs> maybe, maybe the sacred leather satchel was lost in the intervening thousands of years that we <laughs> achieved space flight and colonizing distant planets. Yeah, yeah, you know what, Joey Turok, he's probably a faker anyways. I don't <laughs> think he's a real Turok. I don't think Joey, Joey Turok <laughs> is the real Turok. No. I mean, he wouldn't be, right? It's, it, because if he's not in this interdimensional space, how did he get the title, right? Yeah. That, it goes so against the canon and everything else that I like watched a review but didn't include anything in my script. I was like, <laughs> it just doesn't fit with the rest of the world. Lore, yeah, Lore yeah. Boy's canon has yeah. written out Turok 2008 officially, so <laughs> y- y'all can rest easy. It's a better world in here, honestly. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Talset, his quest is to stop the campaigner. Uh, the campaigner is an evil warlord who seeks an ancient device known as the Chrono Scepter, which we'll get into. Uh, the campaigner is uh, basically a cyborg man, and he's cool. evil. The uh, the what was it? Not Earth God, uh, Mother God. Mother God decided to also implant him with uh, robotics to make him a cyborg man. She's, Probably came from that. Yeah. She's sitting there one day. She's like, "Well, I've done it with dinosaurs, but..." Dare I? Dare I even voice it? What if I did it with man? <laughs> <laughs> Just take your dumbest guy, who's like closest on the intelligence scale to, on the IQ scale rather, to a, a dinosaur, dinosaur, and see how smart you can make him. Definitely <laughs> smarter than a dinosaur, but like maybe not as smart as a parrot. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> it's implied that the campaigner is like the Turok. Like uh, when one campaigner passes away, the title will be passed on to another one. Okay, and okay. The they'll become gang. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, Campaigner, he represents everything, like, manufactured and evil, and the Turok is something, like, closer to the Earth than good. So that that's, like, the two sides of it, I guess. Nice. Yeah. And the Campaigner, like I said, is a title that it goes across multiple generations. Um, so the Chrono Scepter, what is a Chrono Scepter that the Campaigner's after and Talset really wants to stop him? It's, uh, it's Flavor Flav's walking cane. Is what I'm gonna guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big clock, wooden shaft, you know, <laughs> little me- little metal nub at the bottom. Nice RGB colors. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, oh, that yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's an ancient destructive weapon that was created thousands of years before the events of the game, uh, and it has to do with the Lazarus Concordance, which are, for all intents and purposes, you can just think like the old ones, ancient civilization that we don't know much about. Okay. Uh, the Lazarus Concordance. Okay. Uh, they found this thing and they shattered it into eight pieces. It's scattered across eight convenient levels <laughs> in order to prevent it into falling into the wrong hands. Whoa, were these guys? Was the uh, the wizard from Glover also one of these Lazarus Concordance <laughs> fucking fellows? <laughs> This was like the mid '90s. Anything yeah. remotely platformer, uh, like the formula, right? Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Just yeah. It is. It's so good. Pieces yeah. to pick up. You got to put them together. Why are you gonna go to places to pick up the pieces, baby? Oh yeah. Except in Turok, on the way, you can run into cyborg dinosaurs and like pick up a minigun and mow them down at the same Did time. You, which was is... there not one of the stages of Glover that was that? I don't, I don't really remember the episode, but <laughs> you, you could turn the turn into you could get a ball. There was heavy ball. There was a minigun, and then there was I don't know the 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 the, the regular sized crystal that you could like lob. Yeah, yeah that was all. Wonky. I like the idea of of him one handed trying to control a minigun and like the spray just going back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Spinning <laughs> until you save your brother, then you get two hands on there and control oh, it. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah. Sinestro. Yep. Um. So you video games and you collect all the pieces. Uh. And along the way, it's actually like a really hard game. Like we were saying, like you collect different weapons. Uh. You start off with your bow, then eventually you get the pistol, then the shotgun, and that's as far as I remember. And then the minigun. I think I brought. I didn't get far enough in the game to really. No, and also I haven't played it since probably the mid two thousands. So. I think there's a bow, so that's all, that's all I know. That's all I know. You definitely start with a bow. There was a bow in Turok two thousand eight. To be fair, oh yeah, yeah, there was. Um, there was that. There was like 
dual pistols. Uh, the bow, actually, in 2008 version, something cool, if you hit, like, a man in the chest with the bow, the animation, the guy would pull the, the bow, like, the arrow out of his chest before returning fire. That's pretty cool. I don't remember that. Yeah. That's not advisable. You should snap the shaft and leave it buried. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> the barbed arrowhead will, will fuck you up more on the way out than it will on the way in. <laughs> Usually they push them through. Oh. You can't do that on the battlefield, and it doesn't look that... I mean, I guess it would look cool if you just, like, grabbed it by the feathers and just jammed it through the back of your chest. <laughs> jammed it through the chest. back and then started returning fire. <laughs> yeah, and, like, spit on the ground, like, blood. Yeah. And then just, like, returning spit fire. out the arrowhead. Just, like, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Damn, dude, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Oh. It was just a joke. It's just a prank, bro. <laughs> So once you collect all the eight pieces, uh, you, along the way, there's a bunch of puzzles you need to do, a bunch of enemies you need to fight. Uh, but then you get to fight Campaigner in a 1v1. And all eight pieces are together, but it's who's going to get it. You are the Campaigner kind of thing. Uh, I watched the fight. I... It, it looks hard. <laughs> okay, uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks tough. Um, but if you do beat him, you will get the Chrono Scepter. Uh, so the campaigner will die to be reborn as another campaigner at some other time. So uh, now you're left with what do you do with this this chronoceptor type? Go thing. back and that's, use, use it to go back in time and kill Hitler. But uh, well, that's a good idea. That's what do you need answer. to go forwards in time because he's kind of like in a loop right now, and there's still dinosaurs. I guess you just need to find the gateway to April 18 something whenever he was born. Kill, right? kill the dinosaur that would have a baby that would eventually lead to Adolf Hitler. Via oh, right. evolution. <laughs> yes. Well, at this point, it would be like a shrew or something. You need to find the shrew, the shrew. who is like the, the great to the exponent 40 grandparent of Adolf Hitler and kill that shrew. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 That, that, that's one solution. Um, yeah. <laughs> Are you saying that's not what happens at the end of the game, Turok? Do you go back in time to kill shrews? <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of where it leaves off for Turok 1. You get to have the Chrono Scepter and like, run around and play with it as a gun. And it, it looks like a long... Almost like a... Like a scepter? It looks like a scepter, yeah. <laughs> 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 you don't fucking say, yeah? With the blue uh, gem on the end, and like you shoot what looks like a blue beam, and then it just explodes in this giant blue cloud, uh, which... These crazy graphics you never would have seen on the up until the N sixty four. It's too bad it doesn't like age guys to death. The the glove in singularity will like make guys old and then they die that way, which is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, they they were like ambitious of what they did with Turok, and it looks great for its time, but they had to like cut the textures, cut the music, a lot of stuff just to fit it on it. I think it's an eight megamite con uh cartridge. Without the like uh, a, without the rumble pack addition to the RAM, like yeah, it's, it's small. really small. Yeah. So they had to, to trim a lot, uh, but I think if you buy the PC port, which is still available, you get those, what they were meant to be, textures. Uh, I should hope it. so. I I think my computer is slightly better than an N64. Maybe <laughs> I could... Have I earned the the extra textures in Turok? Oh, acclaim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently, uh, like, the N64 in 1997 was, like, way more powerful than most people's PCs, which is fun to think about, right? Yeah. <laughs> how that How that's changed, where, like, the consoles used to outweigh the personal computers, and now it's the other way around. Yeah, well, now you, you have a digital watch. Yeah. With, yeah. with inflation, they used to be like way more expensive too. Like I think the yeah, Atari yeah. twenty six hundred in today's dollars was like sixteen hundred bucks or something like that. Like, yeah, nah, just, crazy. Like people would bulk at that for sure. Yeah, but now it's for the masses. Crazy. Yeah. So next up is uh, we finish off. You get the the Chrono Scepter. You get to run around the world and play around with it and just like one shot T Rexes. But we do have to solve the problem. So that happens in Turok 2, Seeds of Evil. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh, wait. In Turok 2, they're just planting seeds? Well, then there's got to there's be... Seeds. Yeah, there's got to be a Turok 3, Fire Trees of Evil. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so, yeah, shortly after Chalcet defeats the campaigner, the warrior had to decide the Chronoceptor's fate. Um, they, they go into some dream sequence where he talks to, like, future and past versions of himself or... Things like that. It's like the Avatar, the basically. Avatar, yeah. That's my, yeah, my okay. exact thought. Yeah. James Cameron's yeah. the Avatar. Yes. 
Yeah, where he's but that's Tarak Makto is the, <laughs> the, the, the guy who flies the, the dragon thing. <laughs> when Tarak fucks his girlfriend's ponytail or something, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. The only thing I remember from that movie is the title of Dinosaur Rider for some reason. Like none of the characters' <laughs> names. <laughs> Just he's Tarak Makto. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So eventually he decided that the best way to get rid of this thing is throw it into an active volcano. Okay. All right. Fair. Yeah. Out very uh, Tolkien-esque. So this did prevent the artifact from being used for evil, but it also would be the cause of a violent earthquake that shook the lost land. Oh. And this would cause a whole new slew of problems. <laughs> 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 this shockwave awoke the primogen, who had previously been put to, into a deep slumber by the Lazarus Concordance. Who also uh, made the, the scepter. Yeah, or at least discovered it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the Primogen was awake, but not an immediate threat. But there would be a threat, like, down the line. So Talset was able to grow old and retire as Turok while the Primogen was becoming a problem. And okay. uh, Joshua Fireseed uh, took took on the mantle uh, before it was time to handle the Primogen. Like any good boomer, uh, he uh, started, he started a, like, a line yeah, of yeah. dominoes, and he was just like, my grandkids can handle that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. <laughs> yeah, uh, I awaken an ancient evil that's uh, going to threaten the, the uh, entire existence of the world. I'm uh, going to retire at 60 and buy a boat. Okay? Yeah, exactly. So have fun with that, kids. Yep. I'm also going to put more exhaust pipes on dinosaurs. I think we could get more CO2 in the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the primogen. So what is the, the primogen? It's an alien creature that was imprisoned long ago in the wreckage of the spacecraft of its own spacecraft after attempting to witness the big bang okay that's kind of cool all right yeah i mean i don't know i don't know how that would work for you uh um, you can just get it on dvd now you don't need to yeah <laughs> yeah so it... neil degrasse tyson will narrate it for you if you want <laughs> <laughs> I guess he was trying to learn something or something, but he came from another universe that presumably had its own Big Bang, and they wanted to see what this Big Bang was like. And by trying to witness the Big Bang, it actually created the bubble, which is the Lost Land. It's only created because the Primogen was there, and now he became imprisoned uh, within it, and the Lost Land exists. So okay. he is He's that... Like Lavos in uh, Chrono Trigger. He's like the, the point in time now. Yeah, he's he's the imperf like uh, the imperfection in the fabric of space and time. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um. So the like I said, the, he's a big old alien creature, and now the primogen. Uh, he kind of has some influence from his uh, time cage, uh, and he's able to take control of some unsuspecting creatures through telepathic powers uh, within the lost land, and. The thing that is actually keeping him in, there's five uh, five nails on on in the world, or uh, there are five energy <laughs> five totems. Five different levels. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> five energy totems. Uh, and once these totems are destroyed, it will release the primogen, uh, shattering reality and destroying our universe in the process. Oh no, hey. that sounds bad. Yeah, it's not good. Um, but we got Johnny Appleseed, Joshua Fireseed, ready to save the day. So don't worry. <laughs> John, Johnny Joshua Fireseed Appleseed, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> uh, he's summoned by Adon, A-D-O-N, uh, the Speaker of Forever Light, and she's just a character that exists in the Lost Land. What was and his she... brother's name in the comics? Was it not that? Did I, have I forgotten already? It's close to that, but it's not quite that. Perhaps, it, it, perhaps it was an homage to that. Yeah, exactly. It's Andar. 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 Okay, person. never mind. Yeah. He can put his arm back on. You can't. So <laughs> uh, Adon is her name. Okay. And she explains that Joshua has been summoned by the elders of the Lost Land, the Lazarus Concordance. So she has some type of tie to these ancient ones and is summoning Joshua Fireseed to save the day. Sure. Yeah. His goal was to stop the Primogen. Uh, from securing and destroying the enemy to or the energy totems that keep him from powering his light ship. So the there's three things he's got to do. He's got to find the energy totems, 
destroy all the things trying to attack the energy totems, so save the totems, and then um, destroy the primogen to end the threat. Although, to me, that sounds like it might end the universe too, but um, that's that's the goal. Well, yeah, release, or, like, is destroying not releasing? Is he going into the tomb of the primogen to destroy him, or...? I th- I think he has to, yeah. So I guess the a dead primogen's just as good as a primogen not leaving, right? Okay, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I will say, I I assume we're going to talk about the game's ending. Um, yes, I did. I did go to both the of them. primogen wiki page. Oh, are you going to talk about the comics as well, or right, both of the endings of the game? Okay, so what do you mean? Yeah. So the end of the comics and the junior novels, technically, it says that the primogen dies by being absorbed into the light burden, the bag of holding that Turok has. Or not, um, not just oh, abs- not just absorbed, but willingly absorbed. So now I'm super curious uh, oh. how the comics deal with Primogen dying. All right, this is the the second game. I don't know how the comics will do it, but um, yeah. So depending on Turok's actions, you can get two different endings. Uh, you do have to beat all the powers, and if you fail any of the energy totem events, um, <laughs> I guess you can just like can, like lose an energy totem and then stop them from killing the other four um oh that's interesting it's like an old-timey kind of moral score system like in mass effect or something where it's, it's just like save a certain amount of totems and then you get the good ending yeah cool. yeah if you save all of them you get the good ending and then the other one the bad ending uh, i'm whole I, I think you might be let down here you think because i'm not sure why he's willingly uh, absorbed but uh in the bad ending if you don't do it all uh, it says thank you for your valor the primage is no more his body has been crushed but the power of his mind is great. Uh, the physical destruction of the Primogen has stabilized the structure of the Netherscape. I fear the Primogen is not truly gone. For now, we can only wait. Ooh, spooky. Okay. Yeah. And in the good ending, he says, The Primogen has been destroyed, Turok. The combined energy from the totems has shattered his body and destroyed the last traces of his telepathic powers. The Omniverse is in your debt. Um, so yeah, so you can, get, you can finish him off for good or... Leave them for another Turok like your boomer grandpa did. Yeah. <laughs> In this I instance it's here, it's like, he'll yeah. reappear as a CEO of an army corporation who wants to use dinosaurs in the military. So <laughs> that, that next guy is the primogen. He wants to build, he, he wants to use dinosaurs uh, and strap them with rocket launchers to use in the military. But he also wants to build electric dinosaurs that don't pollute the atmosphere. So, you know, <laughs> he's sending one of them to space. He's very hip and trendy. He's big on Twitter. Okay. So maybe he's okay. The primogen. <laughs> The I like that my- <laughs> it's on Twitter. <laughs> I like that my kids can watch Disney Plus on their electric uh, it, dinosaur on the way. Yeah, to- yeah. yeah. <laughs> on their electric yeah. dinosaur. Well, in the nineties, you know, uh, a dinosaur had less RAM than a digital watch. Uh, but now, <laughs> <laughs> except for those Tyrannosaurus, or what the fuck are the Rammers? The oh, Triceratops. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the Ramrods. Yeah. <laughs> So there are other games, and even an animated movie uh, for Turok. Uh, I didn't look into anything about the animated movie. Uh, I watched for Turok, the re-release in 2008. Uh, I watched like a review on it. But there also is, so it goes Turok, Dinosaur Hunter, we talked about today. Turok 2, Seeds of Evil, it's Johnny Fireseed. Yep. Uh, Then there's Turok Rage Wars, which is only released on the N64. Turok 3, Shadow of Oblivion, only on the N64. Turok okay. Evolution, only on the N64, and then the Turok re-release. So, oh uh, fuck! I remember the cover for Turok Evolution. It's like a, it's just a raptor jumping out of the box. Yeah, uh, actually, that one I'm not sure if it's only N64. That might have been one of the multi, but you can't get another, it now. That's another blockbuster memory of mine, like a dream, yeah. basically. Okay, I will yeah. say there yeah. was there was Turok Battle of the Bionosaurs, which was released on the original Game Boy. <laughs> which okay. is, is apparently it says it's the counterpart to Turok Dinosaur Hunter, so it's like the counterpart to the the original. It sounds gotta, like that's within like the second comic universe instead of the third. Like it's the one right before Acclaim. Yeah, um, yeah. I, this is this is from the the list of Acclaim games. So, oh shit! Yeah. yeah. Wow. Kids these days don't want Bionosaurus. We got to change. We got to reboot. <laughs> <laughs> but just in case they do, we'll make a Bionosaur game for the Game Boy. Yeah. <laughs> so Turok 1 and 2, they're both... Uh, those are the ones, in my opinion, worth playing. And they're on Steam and on my wish list. And uh, just go check it out if you want. Uh, but also, <laughs> probably if you've never played any of them, 2 would be a good place to get in. Just because I hear the gunplay is like really phenomenal for the time and really can still hold up. 
Uh, but Turok 1, definitely for the nostalgia. I thought about the opening level today, and I'm like, oh, I just want to experience again and see what <laughs> it feels like versus what it felt like when I was a, a youngster. I, I think the guys who ported it to PC are like Night Dive Studios, and they specialize in porting old shooters to PC. Good. I very much doubt that Turok 1 is nearly as hard with a mouse and keyboard or like a regular controller these days. We were probably, you know, held back by being... Six, six and using an N64 <laughs> controller. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of hurdles for us to overcome. Yeah, Definitely. yeah. And, uh, well, that's been Turok. I, I had a lot of fun looking it up, and uh, I think we need more Dinosaur Hunter games because I like them. I'll, I'll yeah. throw my hat in and say, yeah, absolutely, more Dinosaur Hunter games. Can't hurt. Oh. Can't hurt. You know what I mean? Horizon no. 2 got delayed, so we've got an opening in the market in 2021 if somebody mm-hmm. wants to just, like, quickly crank out a quick a dinosaur dreaded- hunting game. Yeah, we need to fight a Dreadnosaur, a Titanosaur, a Blue Whale. Whale. (laughs) Dreadnoughtus. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Blue Whale would have to be on, like, wheels, so it's an actual threat. Right. The arteries leading into a Blue blue Whale's heart are big enough for a man to swim through. Well, that could be a a little passage right there There in the game, huh? Yeah. That could be an interesting level. They did it in Gears of War 2. You go inside that big worm. Yeah. God of War, you fight, uh, like, Gaia's heart, I think. You could... Uh, yeah, you go, yeah. You go do yep. that type of thing. You go. Yeah. You, you kill the Titan after she turns on you. Yep, that's got to yep. work three, I believe. I yes, so. and you do that to Kronos as well, I think. Yep, absolutely. Your father. Uh, cool. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck out of here now. <laughs> Uh, no, thanks everyone for listening. Uh, we have been the Lore Boys coming at you live from our homes. Um, Jamie was the host of this episode. And Jamie, do you have anything that you want to plug or recommend our listeners do? Do you have any political opinions you want to push on them or something like that? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> go to the Discord. And I hate what the dinosaurs did to the Native Americans. Hey, make dinosaurs uh, extinct again. Yeah. That's what we've always yeah. said it. You know, <laughs> we've got a red hat saying it. Uh, Peter, how about you, buddy? You got you got anything? Instagram, probably. What about what else? Hmm? Yeah, at Lord Boys Podcast on Instagram. Um, I suppose I would want to. I'll take the opposite political opinion, uh, at which I guess is build back better dinosaurs. Okay, uh, yeah. Which I think I think was the opposite it's, of it's, it's, make dinosaurs extinct yeah. again. Dinosaurs, yes we can. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> isn't that a movie? Yes we can with a bunch of dinosaurs on it. No, uh, that's we're, we're back. back. Oh, guess. we're back. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> dinosaurs love, we're back. Rod, That'd be a good one too. Roger yeah. Dangerfield. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's a classic yeah. for sure. Uh, yeah, and if you guys like the show, please th- think about leaving us a nice review on whatever podcast app you use. Um, it means a lot uh, for our numbers and for finding new people. If you want to join the conversation or suggest an episode, uh, you can go to uh, lordboys.com slash about and find the links to our Discord. Uh, link to our Discord will also be in the description of this episode, so you just click that and it should open Discord on your phone. If you don't have the Discord app, it should take you to the website, but I don't know how phones work, so maybe it doesn't. I don't know. You can figure it out. You're smart. Uh, smart enough to listen to us uh, anybody who wants to support the show financially help keep the lights on uh, you can find us on Patreon patreon.com slash the lore boys uh, it means the world to us to all of our patrons um, if we have a new patron I think we do I'm sorry for not shouting you out I didn't look you up before the, this episode but we can maybe shout you up on shout you out on the next episode uh, Jamie <laughs> Jamie has very loudly sorry. left and rejoined <laughs> I assume he hit the update <laughs> button on his Discord. Uh, uh, with... Trying to check who our new person was, and I jumped voice channels by accident. Uh, <laughs> you Google. Um, yeah, yeah uh, loreboys.com, or not loreboys.com, uh, loreboys.com slash bet to find all links to everything, or patreon.com slash loreboys if you want to support the show financially. If you don't trust that and want to support our other initiatives, not keeping the lights on, but keeping the lights out, making dinosaurs the... Uh, dominant race on earth uh and they're not prone to uh traditional edison light bulbs uh so we are trying to we are starting an initiative to uh extinct all people uh, and all <laughs> all modern mammals honestly i think we can say that uh i think we can as long as you don't pick like one specific race or ethnicity to extinct you can say i want to yeah. extinct all people that's fine 
I want to replace us with dinosaurs. No, Uh, all human life, Jamie. We got to we want to replace us with dinosaurs and bionic dinosaurs. We want to get them. So first things first. Okay, we got to fit dinosaurs with hybrid motors. Okay, these CO two (laughs) motors that are running on dinosaurs will not fly for for the twenty thirties. Okay, so if we want to get our task done, we need your guys' submission. Please send us. I I think (laughs) I think batteries. I think motor parts. I had a funny thought of like two T Rexes trying to start each other's rip mower. Like, you do mine, then I'll do yours. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so I think we're gonna get we're gonna need some batteries and we're gonna need some engines. So uh, if you're if you're still living at home with your parents, just take the engine out of your your dad's push mower. Uh, send it to us in the Please. mail. Uh, we yeah. will not refund posting because that's going to be expensive. Uh, but also send us any, <laughs> any loose batteries you have. And we're going to, we're going to tape batteries to engines and make uh, hybrid hybrid motors to power these dinosaurs. Um, A new green age of dinosaur power is upon us. We're going to do it. Yeah, we're coming up with some really, really creative and unique uses of dinosaurs in uh, the modern age. So we could, uh, you we ever want them to run off of biomass. And that'd be self-sustaining. <laughs> yeah, that's. Oh yeah, that that yeah. sounds that sounds like uh, that sounds pretty ambitious. I'm gonna tape okay. batteries to electric motors until or regular motors until we can figure out how to biomass things. Uh, but if I've never seen if, anything <laughs> that would lead me to believe that dinosaurs are liable to run amok at a, any given yeah. moment either. They're very trustworthy animals. But that's if you're true. a TikToker or uh, know a favorite TikToker and ever wanted to tick and or talk from the back of a. a uh, gigantosaurus as as we call them um we're we're trying to make that happen okay we're we're trying to make it possible and we're trying to make it green so uh please send send your your donations to uh loreboys street it's one two three loreboys <laughs> street uh loreboysville uh country is of course loreboys um and yeah we'll get yeah. it there <laughs> it's our nation state <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're we're libertarians and we're a sovereign state we don't we don't believe in the jurisdiction of canada as a, as a country <laughs> uh and i guess that would constitute a lore boys lore boys, lore boys. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye seceding There's two possible outcomes from eating an entire jar of mayonnaise, uh, coma, or superpowers. And I'm, I'm not ready to find out which. <laughs> well, let's, let's check in on the LA Beast, see what he, see what he has to say about <laughs> oh, it. Oh, yeah, I bet he's done it. Sure, he's eaten he a jar, jar or two in his day. I always say that mayonnaise is the grossest thing that I enjoy eating. Yes. It's, yeah, it's pagan oil, like, in the end, right? I know, like... like uh, as a concept, it's fine, but the thought of putting no. a spoonful of or like licking the mayonnaise off a knife, like yeah. horrifying. But I would do it. Ketchup, I, uh, no problem. Ketchup, sure, whatever. Mustard, no problem. You know, relish, no problem. Uh, 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 uh. My name's Ethan. If I could train monkey brain for any animal's kind of brain, I would have to go with crab brain because apparently we're all gonna get there someday anyway. Um, if I could trade monkey brain with anything, I'd get brain from your mom. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> My mom got big brain. She'd do crosswords. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, oh my God. Uh, if I could trade oh monkey God. brain <laughs> so for excited any, about the prospect any of other brains. brain, uh, 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 <laughs> I would like to get Hitler's brain uh, and then kill myself. <gasps> Thus killing because, Hitler. Like, they have it in a jar, and I think if they could do the transplant right before his personality overwrote mine, like the suit in Crisis, I think, uh, <laughs> then I'd kill myself. Dude, that's basically the script for Looper I just watched. <laughs> <laughs> who, who do you think has Hitler's brain in a jar? I don't know, like the CIA? <laughs> Futurama folks? <laughs> I don't think the CIA was invented in 1945. Um, I was going to say, I don't think they were around. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, probably no one. And to my knowledge, he killed himself already. So whatever was left of his brain was probably not in great shape. I do think the answer is invalidated because Hitler also technically had monkey brain. Um, but if we're going to accept human brains as a possibility, then I would like to say Jamie Lee Curtis. And I would like it to happen by both of us uh, running into each other in the hallway, uh, head, head, head to head, and then waking up on a, some sort of freakish Friday. Um, yeah. Now, do you guys have to bump into each other Thursday night for that to happen overnight? 
Or us to wake up on Freakish Friday? Yeah, unless we're out cold for yeah. a solid day, which is terrible. Make it happen me. on a Tuesday and then make a wacky Wednesday, you know? like Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wacky Wednesday involves, like, clocks on the floor and a hose pouring water, although it, it's clearly cut in the middle. Things like that is, is happens on a wacky Wednesday. So. Okay, okay. For the record, for the record. My favorite Dr. Huh. Seuss book is Wacky Wednesday. So we're doing another sound check. You guys were, the levels were okay. You guys were just a little crunchy. You guys were crunching. Okay. Is that so normal? I, I don't know. Maybe maybe we just always have bad sound. Um, I, mean, so, yeah. I mean, that doesn't sound good, but <laughs> we're working on it. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. It's like, a, Sorry. like a child using an iPad that... Because yeah. <laughs> I had it deactivated like as soon as I installed Windows, because I was like, why the fuck would I... I don't, I don't <laughs> want X xbox game the game bar like that sounds like garbage so i like disabled it but now that i'm using game pass i can't see my achievements pop i never know why i got one and i was yeah. getting frustrated <laughs> yeah